What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. In today's video, I thought it would be good to go through some tips and tricks for playing League of Maidens. I haven't put these in any order. There's not like this is the best tip or the worst tip or anything like that. I'm not numbering them. I'm just going to give you a handful of tips for your gameplay in League of Maidens. So first off, you can get a free portable forge and a portable grinder. Now, when I did my video about the portable forge, the portable grinder, and really everything that the forge and the grinder does, a lot of people commented on there that I shouldn't have bought them, I should have used these promo codes. Now, these promo codes that I'm going to give you are actually linked to some YouTube channels, and I'm going to link those in the description of this video if you want to get over and check out their content. I think that's only right since I'm talking about their promo code in the game that I make sure that they're linked in the description of this video so that you can get over and check them out. So if you want the free grinder, what you're going to need to enter in the promo code section of the game is a free MMO station. If you want to get the free portable forge, what you need to enter in that promo code section is MMO Byte, and that's B Y T E. Now, both of those have YouTube channels. Like I said, they're linked in the description of this video. The other promo code that I was notified about in the comments of that video was actually Guns Blazing, and that gives you mod number 17. I couldn't find a YouTube channel for Guns Blazing that I felt like was covering League of Maidens, so I'm not sure what YouTube channel or why that promo code's in game. If you know, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. But at the end of the day, that's going to save you a bunch of shards on not buying the portable forge, not buying the portable grinder. I have no idea whether these promo codes are going to remain in game for the entire time the game's out, or if they'll take those out at some point, maybe after alpha. So I definitely recommend using those promo codes right away because you never know how long they're going to last in game. My next tip is about adding some extra stats to your character, and it's hidden kind of in a place that you don't expect to find it. It's an area of the game where you don't think about going to add additional stats to your character. And it was something that I overlooked a lot until a friend of mine said, hey, go check this out. And when I did, I found that I could assign some extra stats to my character just by clicking a button. So where that is, is it's the quest guide. And you either can click on that through your escape menu, or you can press the L key to pull that up. But the area that you want to look at is the achievement section. Now in the achievement section, you have some different options of things that you've unlocked in the game. And you're able to assign titles and you're able to assign stats. Now your title is going to be displayed above your head just like your character information, but the stats just simply go into your stats. And some of these are really good. The one that I'm currently using, it gives me an additional 7% health and it's easy. All I had to do was click a button. I had already completed that achievement in my gameplay. So definitely be coming back to this screen, looking at achievements and seeing what stats you have unlocked. You can also go through this and decide, hey, you know what, I really want this stat, so I'm going to work on that particular thing today to get that stat unlocked. The next tip that I have for you is for those of you that may have a sensitivity to light flashes and particle effects and things like that. I've had a couple of my friends say that they are not enjoying the game because the light particles and the flashing for the animations of attacking is just overpowering and they don't like it. So actually, if you go into your settings and you go to the accessibility settings, you can turn a lot of that off, not off completely, but tone it way down to where those particle effects are more manageable and there's actually a lot more visible than there was before. So definitely play with that and find your perfect balance between having the particle effects or having them lessened. But that is definitely something that I recommend you go and check out if you're having issues with the amount of particle effects and the amount of light, the brightness, the flashiness in League of Maidens. Now my next tip is really for those of you that have purchased the storage in game because this really wouldn't matter to you if you don't have the storage. But a lot of times the treasures and the materials look 
similar. So instead of going to your storage and kind of looking at each thing and each item and trying to decide what you want to move into your storage and what you want to sell is to go to the vendor first and just click the sell all valuables button. That's going to sell all of your items that you wouldn't use for crafting. And then after you sell those items, you can simply go over to your storage and move everything else. The one caveat to that is there are some valuables like fish that it will not auto sell. It also will not auto sell any cubes that you have, and it's not going to auto sell the gold that you turn in for in-game currency. But what I can say is once I started doing this, it actually saved me a ton of time not going in and figuring out what I wanted to keep and what I didn't want to keep. I simply went and sold all of my valuables, and then I went over and I I just put everything else in storage. Interim leveling is super important, and it's super important for two reasons. One, this actually adds levels to your attack skills. So if you're using the mouse one button and you are interim leveling mouse one, that skill is actually getting levels added to it. So you can add up to five additional levels to that skill. Now what you need to pay attention to in addition to just leveling them up, just using the interim leveling system, is how powerful it gets because that's going to give you an idea of how powerful that's actually going to be if you were to go through the loadout screen and upgrade it or craft an upgrade for it. And a quick side note about upgrading your skills or upgrading your attacks is it only goes to level five. Level five is the maximum that you can upgrade to. Once you pass level five, you have to actually craft those upgrades. So the difference is when you're going one through five, you can actually just spend the gold coins to get that upgrade. Once you get past level five, so as soon as you're going to upgrade to level six, you actually have to craft it. The other important thing to know about interim leveling is that if you have, say, a assault rifle and a sniper rifle, those are two separate things, and you'll want to upgrade the one that you're going to use. So simply equip the one that you want to interim level before you assign those points, because the guns do not share interim leveling. And in case you don't know, if you change your character or you log out of the game, your interim leveling goes away. So this is a function of while you are playing with that character, you're able to add levels. However, if you close out of the game and go back in, you start back again with no interim levels. And I can say that the interim levels are very, very powerful, and I usually focus on getting those interim levels before I go and do harder bosses or start using my death invitations to get more XP and more shards. And that's going to lead me right into my next tip. If you guys are struggling getting enough shards or you're struggling getting enough XP or gold, what you need to start doing is if you're able to defeat those enemies that are in the dungeons and you're doing that with ease, start using those death invitations. The death invitations do multiple things. One, it increases the amount of XP that you're getting per kill because you're fighting harder enemies. It increases the type of drops that you're getting, so you're going to get better drops because, again, you're fighting harder enemies. You're also going to be getting more shards and more gold because, again, you're fighting harder enemies. So, if you are able to go through and wreck shop with 10 death invitations in a dungeon, it's worth Worth spending those death invitations because the return on your investment is going to be worth it when it comes to your gold, your shards, and your experience points. And something that I've been doing with the mythical dungeons when I've been playing through them is I've actually been using an experience ticket. I've been using a rabbit foot for the additional 25% chance of critical. And then I've been using about 25 of the death invitations. And I've been raking in the shards and the gold recently. You'll notice the difference once you start doing this. And the last and probably the most important tip that I'm going to give you in this video, and the reason why I chose to do it last is because I think that those that watch the video all the way through should be rewarded with the most important information. So thank you for being here, but 
what I want to tell you is that you should be using the shield potion. Now originally when I looked at it I was like well I'm not going to use that. I barely block. I don't need my shield to be any better so I'm just going to leave it alone. When I finally used it, I saw what it actually does. And what it does is it doubles your health bar. So whatever number of hit points you have, it's actually going to give you those hit points again. So essentially giving you two health bars like a lot of the things that you see in League of Maidens. A lot of the NPCs or the enemies have multiple health bars. This is a way for you to add a single health bar on top of your health bar. And I found that this really helps against those boss fights when you're doing a higher level dungeon with the death invitations like I've been doing mythical dungeons on a regular basis recently and that has really helped me get through that final fight. Now I'm sure I missed some things, maybe your favorite tip didn't make it in this video, and if that's the case, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below, and that tip may make it in a future video. The whack moments in this video were sponsored by my legendary supporters. If you'd like to become a member, you can click the button below that says join, that'll give you all the details. And if you want to continue the fun, there's two videos on the screen, you can pick one of those to watch next. Please don't forget to whack the like button, and if you're new to the channel, I'd encourage you to click that subscribe button, click that bell so you get notified notified when I upload another video.